All right, let's play some NBA Jam, one of my favorite games. We're playing it on the Super Nintendo this time, I'm not doing it on the Genesis. Uh, that way I can use the Super Nintendo controller, which I do prefer. NBA Jam is just, to me, it's just special. I have so many great memories of this game, although this is not the version that I got initially. There we go. We're going to turn computer assistance off because that's dumb. There are certain things about this version of the game that I don't like, and I'll talk about those as I start to play. We're going to go ahead and get started, though. Yeah, sure, I'll put my initials in. So the first thing you're going to notice it right away is that there's a password. Uh, the Genesis version of NBA Jam does not have passwords. You can just use batteries, so you didn't have to worry about a password or save your stats. For the Super Nintendo version, not so much. It wasn't until NBA Jam Tournament Edition that we got a battery inside of the cartridge. Going to use Houston here. And here we go. So another thing about the Super Nintendo version of the game is that there's no music that plays while you are playing the game. The Genesis version has music that plays. Um, and while it doesn't seem like that's a big takeaway, it really is. The arcade version of the game has music that plays too, so playing in silence here is just, you're missing something. Both games look about the same. The Super Nintendo version of the game may be a little bit cleaner looking. Uh, and the sound is certainly better in terms of quality. Uh, but in terms of quantity of sound bites, and again, with the music being missing, it's Advantage Genesis. One for three. Nope. Wide open. Yeah, on fire already. Look at that. So now I got to get back. When you're on fire, you can goaltend. You can do pretty much anything you want. So you want to try and stay on fire as long as you can. There we go. What was that? One easy thing to do to stay on fire, other than defense obviously which i totally screwed that up is being able to pass the ball and assist uh because when you score three baskets in a row your fire goes out so it's a good idea to spread the ball around oh i'm still up 10 takes off from the free throw line <laughs> The sound effects are definitely clear. There, there's no question about that. It could be a little bit more bass, I guess, but it's serviceable. It'll do. So it's 20 to 8, and it moves fast. We're a quarter of the way through. We've only been streaming here for about four minutes, so we're going to be playing a game here in about less than 15 minutes. And I'm heating up again. Man, if I am able to go on fire twice in two quarters. Eh. Ah, I can't believe that he wasn't there to help. Man. Yeah. So one thing about NBA Jam that a lot of people don't know is the kind of dunk you pull off is based on where you take off from on the court. So it's a good idea to attack the basket from all kinds of different directions in order to get different results, if that's something you really care about. Wide open. There it is. 
Also, if you see yourself going for up for a dunk and you think that you're going to get blocked, it's a good idea to pass out of it. Ugh. Still up 15. Three oh mys in a row. I think the randomizer's broken. <laughs> oh, I passed it too, and it didn't. Ah, it's all right. It is okay. I will trade baskets all day. When you're up by as many as I'm up, you can afford to give up some. The helicopter. Oh, man, I can't believe I did that. That was, as they say, not smart. All right, so I'm up 19. Time so double them up as we go to halftime. This is a reasonable copy of what you see in the arcade with that pseudo full motion video there. You don't hear Tim Kittrow with the altitude is an attitude bit, but still, it's pretty close. All right, let's just get right back to the action here. Heating up again. I wasn't able to convert last time, but I might be able to here. There we go. Oh, didn't react until too late. It's okay. The double windmill. <laughs> oh, this is great. So, obviously, you can play this game now thanks to Arcade 1-Up. It is the best way to play the game if you have that ability or if you find an arcade machine somewhere. Um, it's the best way to play it. But the home versions are good enough, uh, I think. I think you accept the imperfections as long as you're having fun with it and as long as it's reasonably close, and that's what these are. Uh, despite the battery problems and despite the... the uh, the criticism that I lay on the Super Nintendo version of the game, it is still more than good enough. It's just if you have if you have the ability to choose, which I did back in 1994, uh, I went with the Genesis because of the advantages that it had. The only disadvantage of the Genesis version, honestly, was just playing with that three button controller, which I had. But everything else with the battery backup and the extra sound and the, the music playing in the background uh, made it worthwhile, at least to me. And I've told the story a few times before, but when I picked up NBA Jam for the Genesis, it was a snowstorm the, that morning. Uh, it had cleared out like late morning. It had, uh, it had tapered off. So I was able to... Uh, I was able to go and get the game. Oh, I still got it, I think. I was able to go get the game, but I had to walk. So the mall from where I was living was about two miles-ish. So I walked two miles to the mall, two miles home in slush, in cold, to get the game. I brought it home, and I played it all day long. And this was when I was so 94, so I was like 22. Uh, no regrets. None. All right, let's see if I can get the shattering backboard thing early. Still, in my opinion, the defining part of NBA Jam. When you're in the arcade and you're playing the game and it's a fourth quarter and you're up. That wasn't smart. Uh, 
the possibility of shattering the backboard, especially the first time you see it, is just... Wow. I got a shot at it. There it is. Just awesome. The arcade version did a better job of slowing the action down just enough to give it more weight when it happens. But nevertheless, when you're actually able to make, make it happen, it still carries weight, believe me. Love seeing it. I never get tired of it. And word on the street that I had heard, and I'm not 100% sure. I haven't done the research. It's just something that I've... Uh, I believe that I heard early on was that the reason that uh, that Tournament Edition didn't have shattering backboards is because the NBA said no. The NBA didn't like that. So they did not let Midway include it again. And what makes that argument stand up, I think, is that the Sega CD version of NBA Jam is the same, uh, even though it came out really late. It came out around the same time that NBA Jam Tournament Edition did at home, give or take a little bit of time. Uh, there's no shattering backboard in that version of the game. And this is just a cakewalk right now. Ugh. Now, I think that the shattering backboard should have stayed in. But the NBA, as uh, if you read uh, the NBA Jam book, or if you have seen Insert Coin, maybe they talk about it. Uh, the NBA was not gung-ho on this idea initially. Uh, Midway really had to sell them on it, and thankfully it worked out. Um, but it was not a slam dunk, as, uh, to, to use the right term. Kim Olajuwon was 63 points, 22 dunks, 5 assists. Eight steals, seven boards, too. Just dominated in this game, and I won by, what, 36? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It is the first team of many, so it's not going to last all that long. And we played through an entire game in about 10 minutes. So NBA Jam is a great game to play. If you just have time to play, like, one game before you got to go do something, I highly recommend doing that. So, that is a look at NBA Jam for the Super Nintendo. We may do the Genesis version at some point down the line. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Pete Plays, and until the next time, take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll do it again really, really soon.